yeah, I also put in the, in, in the, in the pitch for this lecture, why do onions cook and butter taste so good? Um, there, there's, there's a few reasons, but one, um, butter tastes good. <laughs> onions, onions can be, or the, uh, onions caramelize because they turn sugars. The sugars taste good, and salt tastes good. And if you ever like want to make a meal taste better, add one of those three things because you're hardwired to enjoy it. Um, we have spots on the tongue for salt and sugar especially, and that increases the mouth to the pitch, which I'll get to talk fast. Um, so onions will taste sweeter when, when caramelized, and caramelizing is different from burning. Um, burning is bad, caramelizing <laughs> is just when you turn them this beautiful golden shape of brown, and that's done by using a lot of fat and not a lot of heat and just a lot of time. Um, so, and then candying. Candying is this really cool process of turning a syrup into a solid mass of sugar. Um, when you start making a candy, you have a certain proportion, like basically when you're making any kind of candy, it's in proportion of sugar and water. Um, if you're doing a syrup, that's fine. If you want to make a proper candy, you need to get as much water out of there as possible. Um, you can then heat your sugar. Like sugar, like one of the things that's really cool about sugar is that it behaves really differently under very specific degree thresholds. So like if you've ever heard of the like hard ball stage or the soft crack stage, there's like a five degree window that that stage occurs. And after that, it's gone and it's irretrievable basically. Um, because what you're doing then is turning the sugar into more interesting things. And the longer you cook sugar, the more water you cook out of it, and then the more heat you apply to sugar, the sugar itself starts to melt. And it starts to form other weird types of compounds that produce a lot more flavor. That's why caramelized things are brown because of the brown sugar thing. Um, and it also becomes more brittle because it's got Okay, and now fats. Um, I really like fats. Um, I don't think fats are given enough credit, both for being cool in ingredients and also being like really interesting substances on their own. So there's solid fats and there's liquid fats. Solid fats are shortening, butter, and lard, basically. Um, and liquid fats are basically every different type of oil. Um, so what you'll often see in pie crust recipes, like talking about solid fats for a bit, is a certain amount of lard or shortening introduced along with butter. And that's because you have different fats, have di different solid fats at different melting points and different equivalent abilities to be stable. So, like, butter, if you leave it on the counter, will like, become really soft. Shortening won't, lard won't. And that means that that, that, like, that, 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 that refers to its stability as a, as a stability to stay solid over a long period of time. Um, which means that you can keep it hot and you can then move to a cool environment and it'll, it'll stay that solid. Um, whereas butter is, is, is a lot more flexible. So like, like often, so like a good pie crust will introduce butter for flavor, and then you use something like shortening for um, a lot more structural integrity. Um, liquid fats, uh, most commonly, are like canola, canola olive oil, and peanut oil. Um, olive oil is healthiest because it's got the highest proportion of beneficial fatty acids. Um, peanut oil is the one that will tolerate the most heat before catching on fire, um, et cetera. Um, fats are also in things like spices. Spices. Um, dissipate really quickly, and when people say fat is flavor, that's for two things. One, a lot of a, a, a lot of flavor is fat itself, like spice, like spice, like things like cumin. When you, like, there, there's oil inside that will then go away if you grind it for a long time, if you grind it and then leave them out. So like, the fat in that food is what's the fat in that spice is what's going to taste like cumin. Um, also, fat is a really good conductor of flavor because there's a lot of compounds that like, compounds are soluble. In any combination of water, fat, and alcohol, um, a lot of a lot of flavor compounds can't be extracted unless you have fat in there, and that's just because like, you have a big pool of fat, and then like it doesn't like transfer out. Like that won't work for like that if you're cooking purely in water, you because fat and water don't mix, you're not going to have any transfer of flavor from that fat to the water because the fat's going to have no way of actually blending in with the water. It's going to have no no binding properties. So. Fat also creates like fat, fat tricks us into thinking that food is moist. So like even if you have like a somewhat dry piece of meat, if you put pat of butter on top of it, it does suddenly becomes really moist. Um, that is when you hear chefs talking about things like mouthfeel. Um, that is what rounds out that flavor in your mouth. It's what coats your tongue because fat has this really cool ability to spread over everything. Um, and it, 
makes things feel really full body uh, because of that ability to spread and because of you know, because it moves around in your mouth really easily. And also because it can melt. Like if you're eating a piece of butter on toast, it melts and that spreads and that's that feeling of like of, of, of like that's that's what makes food foods taste full. It's not so much that that makes you full, so much as when you first bite into it, it has that feeling of taste and full. Um, so that's what I think is Capsaicin is the substance that makes food spicy. There's only one, and it's capsaicin that makes, for the most part, alcohol soluble, which is why if you like Sam and you put chili peppers in your vodka, you will make one of the most painful substances <laughs> <laughs> to I do not recommend drinking that strict for the record. That and or I mean a shot glass. <laughs> <laughs> you asked for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's it about alcohols. Now um, let's talk. Let's let, let's talk about batters, um, which means let's talk about brownies. Um, <laughs> the ingredients to this are really simple. Um, It's not just because those things taste good, but because of what they do. Um, again, that is what um, increases that mouthfeel, makes things taste really tender, and it's able to carry flavors really well. Um, and, and butter has a lot of its own flavor, so it'll distribute that flavor really evenly around the brownie. And a brownie, where you want it to be as dense and rich as possible, should have a lot of that. It's necessary. Um, the, the another thing that's really good about this recipe is that it has the minimum of flour possible, just enough to bind it together just enough to give it enough structure so it's not this big soupy mess. Um, otherwise, you'd be baking, if you, if you had the eggs in there, you'd be baking something like a brownie omelet. Um, 